Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this video, I'll actually be showing you guys how to create an image downloader, which will help you download images from the internet. So what you'll be doing is passing the URL of the image to the program, and the program will be um, downloading that image and saving it to the directory that you specify to do so. So without further ado, let's begin. So as you may see already, I've got Visual Studio Code opened up. Um, what you need to do now is go ahead and create a new file and then save that file as whatever file name you want. I have called it imagedownloader.py already, so I'm not going to do that again. Tap in that .py and save. Cool. So let's actually begin. So in this tutorial, we're going to be need, uh, needing to make requests to different websites since we need to um, grab the URL, make a request to the specific website from where the URL is and then get the information about that image. So we're going to do import requests because we need to make a lot of requests for this. And we're going to create a function called download files. And then in this function, we're going to pass in a URL. So this is our custom functions that we're creating for ourselves just to make our code a lot more neater. So in this function, we're pretty much going to be needing the URL to the image and the function is going to save the downloaded file in the end as an outcome. So what we need to do first off is actually find out a local file name that, that is going to be used um, to save the image once the data for it is downloaded. So local file name is going to be a variable where it's assigned to URL. So whatever URL is passed as a parameter to this function dot split and then forward slash and then access the array and use minus one. So what does this do? You may ask. I'm going to quickly print local file name and now I'm going to go down here use my download files function and type in a fake um, URL so let's say com and forward slash is going to be something like I don't know image.png cool so let's assume um, this is the fake reference to an actual image online but it's obviously not um, so what we are going to be returned is going to be the file name including the extension of the image so in this case, it's going to return to us image.png, which is going, what we're going to be using to actually save the file onto our computer. So let's run this. Uh, seems like it's running something else. Let's delete that. Run this again. And as you see right here, we have an outcome that says image.png. Now, if I were to close this and then change it to, I don't know, image1.png, because obviously links will change all the time. Save that and run it up again it says image1.png. So no matter what the um, URL is, it's going to capture the file name and the extension type so that it can actually save successfully onto your computer. So that's one step done. We are going to get rid of this um, print local file name because we don't need to print it each time it finds it out. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is actually create a stream for our requests. So with requests.png get as i said we need to get a lot of information for my url which is going to be getting the actual data to save it later on so we need to use the get um protocol which is a common http protocol to get information we're not going to get into the other ones for now we're just going to use get because we want to get information now we need to pass in the url from which it's going to be grabbing the information and then we need to assign stream oops not stream stream equals true so that will allow it to stream information now we need to um, assign this object or the value that's returned to as R so that we can reference to it a lot easier. Now at this stage, the program is downloading data from the internet. So we're going to prompt the user that the program is downloading information. Cool. Now what we need to do next is actually prepare our file and create a new file with the local file name that we saved a moment ago. So this file is going to store all the information that's downloaded and then be converted into a, an image file to pretty much replicate the online image. So another file stream with open C. I'm going to give it a directory where I want it to save my image. You guys can go ahead and give it the directory where you want it to save your image. Don't copy this because that will not work for you. And then at the end of it, I'm going to do a plus local file name so that it's concatenated. Um, the file name and its extension type and actually is able to write to the image file. Now we need to open it using write bytes mode because the data we're going to receive from the request object is going to be in bytes. So we need to be able to write bytes to this um, file stream that we just opened. And then we're going to assign it to as F so that we can easily um, 
reference it. So we're going to print at this stage, we're writing data to file. So we're going to prompt that to the user so that the user knows what's going on. Now at this stage, what we could easily do is write f.write, um, <clears throat> what was it, r.content. So we could just do that and then we could do f.close and the program would work just fine. But the issue with doing that is that it's bad practice. So what we're doing right here, if we had to do it like this, would be that all the data that's just gathered and downloaded into this request um, object, we would be taking all of it, shoving it into our RAM and then writing it all at once. So that could put a lot of pressure on the computer. We don't want to do that because it's bad practice as well. So what we can actually do instead is break the um, data that we've just downloaded from the internet into chunks and then one by one we take that chunk of information and keep writing it to our open file until the data has actually been completed for the file to be um, saved as an image. So we are going to use a for loop and then we're going to say for chunk which is just a variable to store each chunk of information in r dot iterate content uh, spelled it right not enter it uh, content so what we're saying is for each chunk of information in the um, our object which is the request object um, which holds our data for each chunk of information in that object we want to iterate through that object and we want to pass in a parameter here which is going to include the chunk size now the chunk size is going to let us um, select pretty much how much information we want to write to the file at one time. You could go with 1024 bytes because it's a pretty good one to use but my system's pretty strong. I'm going to go with 8192 bytes at a time. It's not a lot to write to an image but hey, I'm going to go with that much for now. So the chunk size is pretty much how much data we're writing to our file in each iteration of this loop. So the higher the number, the quicker the file would be saved. Obviously, it's going to be in milliseconds difference, unless your image file is humongous, which I doubt it will. Now, next, use a colon, and then finally, you're going to write the information to the file. Now, while writing it, you're not going to do r.content because that's the entire chunk of information, not the split one. We're going to actually use the variable chunk, which is holding each chunk of information that's gathered after each iteration of the loop until the loop is completed and the file data has been saved. Cool. Now once this is written, we need to make sure that we're actually closing the file as well. So we go three iteration, I mean uh, three indents back and then type in f.close so that the file is closed and all the data is saved. Now we print uh, download complete because obviously the download is complete. You can also add on to that by saying something like file save as and then we type in the local file name variable that's a nice touch to it so now without further ado let's actually go ahead and run this function but this time with an actual legit link to an image so if i go to chrome i've actually got an image selected right here so what i did was i just typed in images on the internet and then i copied link address right here make sure you're copying the right one so copy link address minimize the window i'm gonna go in here and paste the link cool now once i've actually i'm going to go back because that doesn't seem like the direct link to the image so i'm gonna go ahead and open image in new tab um, and then when you open it if it's the right um link you would see a dot jpeg at the end right so you need to make sure that you have an actual extension in the link otherwise this will not work so make sure that the end of the url actually has an extension for the image Control a Control c to copy the link i'm gonna get rid of this stuff because that's not the one we're looking for and we're gonna paste the actual one so make sure it has an extension at the end save it and now i'm going to quickly go ahead and run this now let's maximize this to see what just happened as we programmed it to do it said downloading first now this has all happened so quickly because my internet's decent speed as well so it's downloaded it in seconds, then it says write it in file to data, which is when the chunks of data are being written to the file one at a time. And then lastly, when the file has been saved and closed, it just says download complete, which is um, telling us that it's finished the download. And lastly, it says file saved as whatever the file name was .jpg. Now, moment of truth, did this actually work? Let's find out. So I'm going to minimize this. 
and where is the image? Okay, it doesn't seem like it worked, so I'm going to refresh the window just to make sure that it's actually working. Let's run this again. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. Let's try that again. Let's just try again, I guess. I'm not sure why that didn't work. Run. Okay, there's no image. Let's actually try debugging it by changing this plus um, local file name to just a static file name. So since I already know that this is going to be a, what's it, PNG or JPEG? JPEG file. I'm going to go ahead and just do something like um, Johan.jpg. Let's run it now. Um, let's see. And here we are. So apparently it was an issue with actually grabbing the file name. So as we see right here, I have the image downloaded to my desktop, saved as johan.jpg and we have the exact image from the internet. Um, now we're going to actually try and figure out why it didn't work with the local file name. Hmm, weird. So I'm going to get rid of this and do my plus Oops. local file name again, run it up. Okay, this time it seemed to work. Maybe the last time I forgot to put the forward slash. So this time it seemed to work. Let's test it with another image URL because here we are with the actual URL it's meant to save it with. Let's test it with another URL. Uh, let's go ahead and find another image. Do, 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 do. Let's go with this one. Um, open image in new tab. Does it actually have an extension? This one doesn't. So we're going to go for another one. Let's try this one, hopefully this one does. Okay, this one has an extension, so I'm going to copy this link right here. So direct link and made sure that it actually has an extension too. And I'm going back to my code. I'm going to replace this link now with my new link. Save and run. It says file saved. Let's close this off. And as you see right here, guys, we have actually managed to pull this off. So our images are being downloaded and saved to the location I've asked it to. Now it's a bit annoying to keep having to go back in the function each time and doing this individually. So we're going to put this whole thing in a loop. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to type in a short loop. So while one, which is an um, unstoppable loop and until the user actually quits the program. Welcome to the image downloader. And then we're going to grab the image URL from the user by capturing as an input. So input string. Um, let's say uh, image URL and the user is going to enter the URL there. Once the URL has been captured, we're just going to type in our download files function and pretty neat, we're going to type in image URL through there and then the um, download files function to do the rest. Lastly, we're just going to print a blank line. Let's run this up and before doing so, I'm just going to kill this terminal because it's messy. Let's try it now. Now it's asking, it's saying welcome to the image downloader which is pretty nice. Image URL. The question is do I still have it? Okay I do. So that's my image URL. I'll press enter. It says downloading, writing data to file, download complete, file saved as tree whatever dot jpeg. Did it actually work? Yes it did. Now let's say you were on a run and you wanted another image just back to back. Let's open up Chrome again. Uh, images. Let's go back to finding another image. Do, 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 do. Let's go for this one. Open image in new tab. Uh, this one doesn't actually have a file extension, so that's not going to work out. Open image in new tab. Uh, this one does, so I'm going to copy the link to this. And then I'm going to paste it in my image URL just to check that it's working twice in a loop. Press enter. Downloading, writing data and saved as dog dot whatever it is. Now let's go back to my desktop and see if that actually worked. And as you guys see, my two images are actually saved. So that was it for today's tutorial, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this um, different experience of working with web files and requests on the web. Um, watch out for future tutorials, which I'm going to be explaining how to use Flask and Django as well. So we're kind of going to jump into the web 
and start doing a bit more complex stuff in the future. I'm also going to be releasing a tutorial on how to download YouTube videos in using a direct link in the future because that's a lot more useful than just downloading images. Because with images you could just right click and click on save as and it's done. But with YouTube images it would be pretty cool if you could have your own app that does it for you. Either way guys, um, if you have any suggestions for new videos please drop them in the comments. Um, thank you for all the support that you have been showing me in the recent tutorials, I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to directly support the channel, um, you can do so by either um, joining as a Patreon on my Patreon page, so you can um, pay a certain amount to be a member, but I'm not forcing anyone. If you feel like doing it, you can do. Um, you can also purchase a super chat emoji or a highlighted message. Do consider also joining the Discord channel because it's a lot of fun on there, it's just a lot of chill people that you can speak to and troubleshoot errors or provide ideas for new videos. And guys, I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace!